uh, system recurrence. Uh, if it was a degree three recurrence, we would have a cubic system here that we would need to solve. So from here, so therefore we have that r plus one must be equal to zero or uh, r minus three must be equal to zero, given as our two solutions. Therefore we have that r must be equal to minus one or r must be equal to three. So these are our two solutions for this particular system. We'll call this R1, we'll call this one R2, doesn't matter which ones we call which, okay? Uh, so now our characteristic, our solution, okay, our solution must look like, so our nth term, so therefore, okay? So therefore, the nth term, the nth term uh, must be of the form, be of the form, and the form it must be of is that a n must be equal to some number c times or one raised to the power of n. So it's minus one raised to the power of n plus some number d, which we're going to try to figure out now in a moment, times or two, which is three raised to the power raised to the power of n. So we need to find appropriate c's and d's, and then we'll have the full closed form system for this recurrence. But what we do know is we have two initial two initial conditions. We have a zero is equal to one, and we have a one is equal to two. So effectively, what we now know is this: is that uh, for the a zero term, yeah, for the a zero term, let me just come across here. Let's just cross, let me just maybe fold this page here. Okay. So when a zero is equal to when a zero is equal to one. Okay. So when when a zero equals one, this closed form solution must be, uh, must be, well, a zero is one. So we're gonna, we're gonna evaluate this at a zero. Okay, so a zero is one. So we must have one equals C times minus one <coughs> raised to the power of, well, it's a zero, it's the zeroth term, the, fir the first term in the sequence. So raised to the power of zero plus D times three raised to the power of zero. And we know that any number raised to the power of zero is just one. So actually, uh, under the initial condition, we end up with that one must be equal to C plus D. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's call this, let's call this A. <coughs> under the second condition, okay, so when, when A1 equals two, okay, so we're evaluating the second term, okay, at index one, so we're evaluating a one, so the n is going to be one and one, okay, but we know that a n is two, so what we have is we have that two must be equal to c times minus one raised to the power of one, because it's associated with a one, plus d times three raised to the power of one, what does that give us? That gives us two must be equal to, well, minus one to the one is minus one times c gives us minus c, and this gives us plus three times D. So this is B now. So what we now have is you can see that we have two equations in two unknowns, C's and D's. Uh, and what we can do is we can actually just solve these. So let's just have a look at these here. So we have from the first one, A, we have one is equal to C plus D. And from the second one, B, we have two is equal to minus C plus three times D. And let's just try to get rid of the C's here, which nothing to do with respect to these. If we just add these two, two, two equations together, the C's will cancel out. So two plus one gives me three, must be equal to C. C plus minus C is zero. D plus three D gives us four D. So therefore we have that D must be equal to three quarters. So now that we know what D is, we can now find C because we know that one is equal to C plus D. So therefore we have, uh, one, which is equal to C plus D, okay? plus D now is three quarters. So that implies then, well, what does that imply? That implies that C must be equal to one minus three quarters gives us a quarter, okay? So our closed form system, so the closed form solution, okay? The closed form solution, okay, to the previous system, and the closed form solution is that a n must be equal to c, which is one quarter, okay, times minus one to the n. So it's minus one to the n times a quarter, which is the same as minus one to the n, it's going to be an n here, minus one to the n over four, plus d times three to the n. We calculate d to be three quarters. So this is plus three over four times 
3 to the n. Okay, well, actually, that's nice there, isn't it? That gives us uh, a n. The nth term is minus 1 to the power of n over 4 plus, well, 3 times 3 to the n is 3 to the n, 3 to the n plus 1 over 4. Okay? And I suppose, well, if we wanted to look at the common denominators, we end up with a n. We could just leave it like this, but we could do all the simplification. This gives us, it's minus 1 to the n plus 3 to the n plus 1 all over 4 is our solution. So let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at it from both perspectives. Yeah, so let's have a look at it from the occurrence and see what sequence you generate. And let's have a look at it from the close form.